I didn't really have any audio to this, so I'm going to voice over as much as I can. Just bear with me. If you follow this whole video towards the end, you're going to get some measurements if this is something that you want to tackle yourself. I'm not a carpenter. This is only the second time I've ever built a box like this. You're going to see imperfections. I'm going to be as transparent as possible to show you all my lines, show you all my cuts. And I bet there's people out there can do so much better than this if you take a little bit more time. I took my time, but I only had a jigsaw to cut the entire thing. So I cut everything you see here with a jigsaw. What's convenient is if you give Home Depot the measurements, you literally can go there and they'll cut the wood for you if you got a straight line. But they won't go into the little tiny details like this here where you're cutting out the edges of a subwoofer box. Now you can tell that the outside face plate, there are some dimensions that are way off and then there's a couple of them that are good. Here's what happened there. I don't have a router table, so I used the router freehand and I tried to clamp down a piece of wood to go along as an edge to do the cutoff wheel and a couple of them slipped. This was the second face plate at $55 a sheet. I wasn't gonna go do another one, but I don't think this one came out that bad. The black you see on the inside is just a bed liner that you can buy. I'll show you later on in the video where that is. The red lights you're seeing here are from my under front seat because the Black Widow Edition comes with under dash red lights. What you're seeing here is my 1800 watt kicker amp, my LC2i Pro. The reason I went with this LC2i Pro was basically because I can take my factory system, turn the bass all the way down and get the highs and lows from that, or the highs and mids, and I can get the sub, the uh, the bass from the subwoofers. The LC2i Pro comes with its own bass knob, so I don't need one for the kicker amp itself because it's pretty well adjusted and I just adjust the LC2i knob when I go. This is the driver's side. If I had to do one thing differently, what I think I would do is put the port in the middle or put the port on the passenger side because when I have it really cranked, sitting in the driver's seat driving down the road, I can hear a little bit of rattle from the door. It's not horrible though, it's whatever. I wanted to keep this as factory as possible so you could see I didn't cut out the floor mats, I didn't cut out the carpet, I didn't do dynamat, I didn't go all out. I literally built this some bitch, put it on the floor, said here you go, set the seat down, no seat spacers, nothing the seat itself comes all the way down to the factory stop and it just so happens that it perfectly sits on top of the seat because if you feel up underneath your seat you have a little bit of flex there so it may look like the seat is sitting on the box itself but it's really not if you look at this view here you can see that it sits pretty flush with the, the, uh, the lip at the front of the seat the corners on the edges are a little out but it's it'll work all right everybody so today Last night I painted this uh, speaker box. This is what I used. Sorry for the dent. So this is what I used on the inside as well. If you can see, you see the inconsistencies with the shine, but other than that, this, this is pretty good. I used a, just a regular uh, paintbrush to put it on. Everything came out good. It actually hit some of the lines on the sides. So the thickness of it hit some of the stuff, but you can see the brush strokes, so I would recommend spraying it. But here's the finished product. As you mentioned earlier, uh, some of the edges were tight. But as I also mentioned earlier, I'm not a carpenter. But the overall product we're happy with. So uh, if you decide to do one of these, good luck. I did not paint the bottom. The uh, I didn't see the point of it rubbing up against the carpet and wasting the material. But the consistency is pretty good. If I can get it to zoom in. I also had a faint line rolling through here and actually hit it. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a shine. That's my hand waving back and forth. It's got a little bit of shine to it. It's not horrible. When it's in the truck, it'll be dark. I plan on trying to put a face on this with some LEDs. More to come. All right, everybody, today we're gonna to talk about a speaker box that I just got done building. I'm not a carpenter by any means, so the measurements I'm gonna give you may not accurately meet what you need. But for my 2021 Sierra AT4 Crew Cab, this is what I've come up with, and I've put it under the seat, and it fits perfectly. So bear with me for the measurements. Like I said, I'm not a carpenter. I'll go over some of the measurements that I did. We'll start on this side with the port. So I got with Kicker. I got with a guy named Jacob. 
and he basically helped me out through this and he gave I gave him the dimensions I told him what was going in it I told him the dimensions of the inside of the box he gave me the port dimension so on the outside piece you want to make sure you have stability and you also want to make sure you have an edge to go around your port one complete piece you don't really want to cut it if you can help it so if you notice the port itself is actually smaller but this little piece here is just a brace. So from this inside edge to this inside edge is five inches. From this inside edge to this inside edge is six and a quarter or six point four inches. So basically, what it gives you is from this edge to the top of this brace. It's just a um, a brace that you get from the lumber yard, or you can go to Home Depot and it's already pre-cut for you. Uh, let me see if I can find one. There you go. It's pretty cut. I think it's like a dollar a foot. So I put this in here. I used some staples, obviously, as you can see. I glued everything together really well. I used a glue that's called Type Bond 3 Ultimate Wood Glue. Get it at Home Depot as well. It's just about everything I got at Home Depot. So the base here, as you can see, this piece goes all the way around, it matches up to the front. In the front here so from the inside edge here to the end of the box is 53 and a quarter inch so add your three quarter inch and there's your measurement if you want to do the whole top and have this meet up to the top the back side here as you can see starts from here and goes to here when i measured from the end the edge here to the edge here is 30 inches minus your three quarters because everything i use is three quarter inch so let's go with the, the base. So the base from the top to the bottom, which is from here to the bottom, is going to be six and a quarter inches. But you're going to minus the three quarter inch base. If you look here, it's three quarter inch. goes all the way down. On the front side, because in a Sierra, the new home on the 2021, I'm not sure about any of the years, the first GMC I've owned. So all I know is what I've got. And I measured everything and it worked out great. I rounded the edge here with a 45 degree chamfer with the router. I did a three quarter inch piece over here that overlaps about three and a half inches. And then it goes all the way over here. And as you can see, the other one goes here. I rounded this off as well. And there's another three quarter and then three quarter. So with this and that, it fits pretty good with the top going over. I'll show you the rest in a second. I ordered these pots, ports off of Amazon. Get a screw in, they take a banana plug or you can put the speaker cable in there. They just screw in. So basically I cut a 3 16 hole with the drill and then screwed them in. So the inside base here, from this edge to that edge in my truck, without taking out the screws that hold the jack in the studs, I ended up getting 10 and a quarter inch. Or I'm sorry, 10 and a half inches. So from edge to edge, 10 and a half inches. And of course, from the bottom to the top, you're still gonna get your six and a quarter with your three quarter inch base, minus your three quarter inch base. Same thing goes over there. Obviously earlier we explained that from this edge to the inside of here is 30 inches. I'm sorry, from the outside edge to the inside, or the outside here is 30 inches. The inside here to the inside here is 10 and a half. So add it all together and you can get the total length. Or we could do a quick measurement for the inside of this one. So I did end up with some rough cuts, but the glue itself fit in pretty good. On the inside, I wedged in the sawdust and the glue came out pretty good. I'll take it and I'll put the rhino, or the, I'm gonna do the U-Pole Raptor, uh, as you can see here. This one is Rust-Oleum, it's a truck bed liner. I just basically painted it out. The squares here look uneven, but it's not. It's the tape job I did. Prep is everything, but I plan on doing the entire box and having it sprayed. So anyway, if you look on the inside, you can see that this is the top of the three quarter inch piece. I rounded it over so when the, uh, 8 inch L7 2 ohm speakers. I've got four of them, obviously. Two there and two there, and they're going to go in and they fit nicely. I think the mounting depth of them is like four and three quarters. So, behind this, 
it's three quarter inch here. It goes about three inches over and then comes out here. Had to round this one out as well. I took that same chamfer bit with the rider and I made sure that that was a 45. I took the sander with 80 grit and I made sure that, that was good to go. As you can see, my port's there. Oh, I'm sorry, my speaker cables or whatnot. So I wanted to make sure that the brace was there next to that, as you can see there as well. And then I went over here and I braced that side in the back as well. So the front here, the front is all one piece. Behind it is another piece of three quarter inch. So you have the two made it together so that the speaker will sit inside flush when it's installed. Other than that, I think we got a pretty good box. More to come. We'll get to take a picture when it's all installed. I'm gonna have it installed this weekend. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit. This is the truck at the dealership the day I bought it. I hope this video helps somebody figure out how to do this project. And if you think that you can't do this project, well, I thought the same thing. Went out and bought some wood, cut up some shit, and made a speaker box. So ultimately, I hope this helps somebody out. All right, God bless.